friend James, you guys know him as the Hacksmith, has been moving to a new shop. But what he doesn't know is that I'm going to be sneaking over here at night to the old shop to build a surprise project that he has no idea I'm doing. When James told me he wanted to do a battering project with me, it reminded me of an old idea that I'd had that you guys asked for in the comments in some of my old videos. And I get to use this. The point is, I figured there's no better time than now to make a rocket-powered battering. If you've watched my channel before, you know that I usually just use simple hand tools to build most of my projects. But being here, I have access to all of this fancy machinery, which is awesome because it makes things very quick and easy, but it also makes things very difficult because I don't know how to use any of it. And now that the lights are on, let's get started. I already drew out an initial design that was basically a generic batarang shape, but it allowed me to flesh out where I was going to put stuff on the batarang. I want something that's more futuristic looking because this is going to be really cool. So now it's time to come up with something that's an original idea. I have the idea. Drawing and erasing with pencil is what I normally do because I'm making stencils myself. This time I have access to SolidWorks because I'm here, so I'm going to use that to draw it. It's time to bite the bullet and learn a new program. I'm going to use this laptop here to make my SolidWorks model. Ian and James have taught me a little bit about how to use it, so I have some modeling skill on it, but I have absolutely no idea how long this is going to take. I will show you the finished product because I can't record hours and hours and hours of me messing with this, trying to make the model that I want through the magic of editing. Shut up. The cooling fan in this laptop makes a lot of noise. I have finished my model. This took longer than I care to admit. I can show it to you now. Oh, it's so loud. This is going to be my rocket powered battery. All I did was select a face and export as a DXF. And I just take that DXF file that I made, put it into the Wham Wazer software, and make a G code file so I can cut this thing out of some really cool material. Let me show you. I don't know about you, but I don't have scrap pieces of this stuff laying around. Titanium. If you had the options that I have, steel, copper, brass, aluminum, stainless, or titanium, I mean, titanium is the obvious choice to make a rocket powered battery, right? There's a little bit of setup involved to get this thing ready to cut stuff out, as there is with anything, but it's ready to go. Let's get this thing started. There it goes. It's gonna punch a hole through the metal, and it's gonna cut this thing out. And just pierce the hole, and now it's gonna actually cut. If you watch my channel, you know I include my failures. I screwed up. I read through the manual and found out that there was maintenance that needed to be done on the machine before I started this cut, but I hadn't done it, and I may have bumped the power button <laughs> when this thing paused for me to do the refilling of the abrasive. Anyway, uh, it, I reset the machine by accident and only got halfway through this cut, so I have to cut another one. First, I'm going to do the required maintenance that I'm supposed to do, but so far, this is super accurate. Totally pleased with it, even though I completely screwed up and have to start over. It's done! I lost the footage of this thing actually getting cut out, which sucks. I've got all the motor mounts and battering cut out. I printed out, cut out a bunch of extra motor mounts because um, I might screw up the next part. But here is the battering, and the dimensions in this are incredibly accurate. I used the water jet cutter instead of CNC plasma because this is very accurate, but it is not as accurate as the water jet cutter. And this also dumps a lot of heat into it and there's cleanup from it. And this is very particular. The tolerances are very tight for everything because I had to measure all of the little bits to make sure everything is exactly as it's supposed to be. This takes longer, but in the long run, it'll take less time because less time for me to clean up all the stuff. There's a slight difference in the kerf. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but from where it penetrates to where it exits, the hole is slightly larger at the top, but only slightly. We're talking fractions of a millimeter here. So there's gonna be a tiny bit of filing that I'm gonna have to do on this to get it ready to accept the parts. Guess I might as well do that now. I told you this thing was accurate. Those holes were set to five millimeters. That's what I got. Now on the other side, only a quarter of a millimeter short. That means I've very, very little filing to do on this to make it exactly perfect. Oh, look at that. Focus, you perfect. Five millimeter LED fits like a glove. Just a tiny bit of filing. Ooh, 
you tell what's going on there? Put some stuff behind it. All of the bits fit now. Plug, wire things, momentary switches, LEDs on off. Everything fits. Motor mounts screwed up on the motor mounts. This one I filed too much and it's not pressure fit like that one is, but the part that I screwed up on was, let me show you. I measured the middle of the rocket motor, not the ends, and the ends are actually slightly larger than the middle. So my sizes were wrong on my engine mount rings, so I had to grind them out substantially to get these to fit. And they're snug, which is what they're supposed to be. Right. Oh, see, those aren't welded on yet. Which is the next thing I have to do. I don't know if you can tell, but these are super tiny and it's titanium. So I have to TIG weld it on. And since you're not gonna be able to see what's going on, I figured I'd draw you a little picture. This is the TIG tip. I'm gonna set it back from the tab that I need to weld and I'm gonna start a little puddle with very low power. And I'll drag that puddle closer to it and this'll floop and it'll melt right down into it. I know that this is gonna work because I practiced a bunch of times. But anyway, I have to do this 16 times and try not to melt through this real thin band that is the motor mount. Luckily, James has a TIG welder, which is another tool that I don't have. So apparently, titanium is very difficult to weld. It's all about cleanliness, and I cleaned this very thoroughly with acetone and then warmed it up with a torch to make sure everything was gone. So I should be perfectly clean. I also have the gas set to flow for a while, that way I can case it before I start my thing. I'm trying my best here. I'm not a welder. Here we go. Look at it. This stuff looks so cool. And I need to do that 15 more times. Two for two. All right, I'm not gonna bore you with the other other 14 of these. I'll see you when I'm done. I didn't screw up a single weld, but having all this color on it now from the welds gives me a great idea. There's this cool thing that happens with titanium. When you heat it up to specific temperatures, it develops an oxide layer that reflects different colors. So I figure why make a batarang out of titanium if I'm not gonna let people know that it's titanium. It turns gold, can you see that? It's turning gold. And then as it gets hotter, it turns blue and purple and green and all kinds of awesome stuff. Check that out. I'll do that on a couple more spots on this thing to make it look pretty. I love titanium. I did do some paint tests, transparent black, oil rub bronze, and graphite dust. But graphite dust was way too silver, oil rub bronze had too much fleck in it, and transparent black let you see the actual colors of the titanium. So that's the one. All right, it's super late at night and it's spray paint time because everybody knows that Batman's first question is, does it come in black? This is transparent, so I'm not gonna cover up the beautiful colors that I just made. I'm just gonna darken them. Technically it's black. It is, because it's dark out here. I'll show you in the light inside once it's dry. It's painted. I screwed up. Basically from the start, I forgot to put holes in that I'll use for retention of the battery. The Wazer could have done this a long time ago. Drilling titanium is no fun. Every single step of this process takes way longer than it seems like in this video. I'm very tired, it's very late, and this paint hasn't had a huge amount of time to dry. And the next step is to put this thing in the vise, sharpen the edges. If I do that now, I risk removing the paint from it that makes it dark. Oh, almost done. This has had enough time to be completely dry now. I can stick it in the vise without removing any paint. Grinder time. Xander wasn't joking. Titanium makes incredible sparks. See you when I'm done. I found a not cool thing about titanium. When you grind it, it rolls a lip over very easily and it's very difficult to get off. Way more than steel does. I did most of it with the grinder, but now I need to file it so that there isn't just rolled over edges. The blades are all sharpened. So now it's just time to throw the electronics in. To start, I have a single cell LiPo. It's a 380-25C. It doesn't look that cool, but luckily, James had some carbon fiber vinyl laying around. Black. 
So I'm gonna wrap the battery in that, and then I'm gonna safety wire it in place. And speaking of making things look cool that go on this, for aesthetic purposes, I wanna trim these rocket engines down so that they fit a little more compactly on the Batarang. And I dug the plug out because they're all propulsion and there's just a clay plug in the end. I figured out that I can take five millimeters off of each one. This is the waste one that I dug the plug out of. I gotta trim all the rest of them. James has a mill, so I've got it set up to take five millimeters off, and I just hit go. I can just crank it through. It is made of cardboard, so there's a little bit to trim off, but it takes a few seconds to make shorter rocket engines. The rocket motors that I trimmed down need to be not cardboard, because that looks terrible. Paint will scrape off of the cardboard, but Sharpie ink won't, and I can make them black. Batman. Black. So I gotta do that to like 20 rocket motors. <laughs> Got this nice little pigtail here. I'll just turn that over and tuck it back in one of the holes. I'm gonna throw some wires on this thing now. The circuit for it is relatively simple. I have a diagram, and it's actually a real circuit diagram. Here's the battery, on off switch. Once the on off switch is turned on, it turns on two LEDs, and once the switch is on, these two limit switches will be wired so that they are normally, so that they are normally closed. That means when you turn the Batarang on, you need to have one of those switches held down because they are wired in series. And because they're in series, either one disconnects the rest of the circuit, which is wires going to the little wire terminals where the rocket motors will be wired into, and then the rocket motor igniters, and then it comes back around to the battery. It's pretty simple. You turn it on, the LEDs come on to let you know that it's armed. And when it's armed, you have to have one of those pushed down. Otherwise, the rocket motors turn on. It just is a little bit difficult because I need to get all of the wires very evenly organized across the entire battery. And this thing is ready to rock and roll. I'm excited. Then the battery died. Unfortunately, I was borrowing the camera and I was trying to keep the batteries charged for it, but that was my last battery and it died. I had to have it done. There was no way I could wait for one to get charged for me to finish the electronics portion, but I already explained everything to you, so it doesn't really matter. And now you get to see the finished product. So you can tell that this thing's already been used because it's dirty. And that's because it's already been tested. And the video for that will be out next week. If you want to see that, subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you want to see these projects in advance before they go up on YouTube, follow me on Instagram at Jerisval. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. It is a rocket-powered titanium battering. What? And I made one for each of us.